its metropolitan area being home to a third of Scotland's population, Glasgow is not only the most populated and biggest city in the country, but is also its cultural capital. Located on the west central side of Scotland on the banks of River Clyde, the city was only several decades ago referred to as the second city of the British Empire, only after London. Glasgow was a thriving city, to the extent that by 1913, Glasgow produced 33% of all railway locomotives in Britain and half the engines of British ships. Also, by 1913, one-fifth of all of the world's ships were built on the Clyde in Glasgow and its surrounding areas. However, the end of the British Empire led to Glasgow losing its industrial recognition that it once had. And while poverty and destitution did exist during the prosperous years, the 1960s and 70s saw a sudden rise in poverty, disease, violence and unemployment. On the 31st of January 1919, 60,000 people in the city gathered in the square exactly and they were protesting against uh, high working hours. So they were demanding it to be reduced to something like 40 from the current 50 or I think 60. And this was one of the biggest riots at the time and considering it was just the end of World War One, it was a, a, like a shock to the police. So there was a really kind of a big riot between the 60,000 protesters or even more and the police. And they were doing it right here because the government's building, which is the chambers, is across there. So they were um, demanding for lesser working hours. Thankfully, no one died, but a lot of casualties and a lot of uh, injuries were made because of this. George Square still continually serves as a pivotal place for protests and demonstrations in Scotland, from the Scottish independence movement and loyalists to Black Lives Matter protests. This place serves as an echo for the voice of the people in the region. Okay, so now I'm on my way to um, Glasgow Necropolis and the cathedral. And just like near the river, right there is the river, just next to the river, this is the place right now known as Glasgow Greens and this is the entrance to it. That arc is called McLennan Arch. Just where I'm standing, there's a like a placard that says this area formerly known as Jocelyn Square was the site of both the Glasgow uh, Fair and until 1865 of public executions. From 1814 to 1865, 81 people were executed right on the spot. And the last thing that they faced was this arc. And it's kind of a symbolism to like a gate to another life. The problem was that they were all held um, publicly. So people would actually come here and watch all these people being executed. So during that time, it was kind of like a, as, as in most of the places in that time, it was most of like a place where people watched and like kind of enjoyed in not a, um, funny sense and more of a enthralling sense, the executions. The Glasgow Fair historically lasted for two weeks in July where all of the work was put off and the Glaswegians would treat themselves to much needed break and spend time with their families. There would be numerous booths and all around was a very fun experience for the citizens. Even though the, still, uh, the fair still has a holiday dedicated to it today, on a recount of a person I spoke to, it is not at all fun anymore. Welcome to Glasgow Necropolis, one of the oldest and most famous and most renowned necropolises in all of Europe. Where I am standing is the tallest monuments in all of the necropolis, which is basically the monuments of uh, commemorating John Knox, which was the revolutionary behind the Scottish Reformation. What I find very interesting is the contrast between how just in front of his monument is the Glasgow Cathedral, which is famous for being not only the oldest building in all of Glasgow but also famous for being the only church that survived the reformation and that means it wasn't burned down because all the other churches were burned down because of protests against the catholic system and whatnot so this contrast between the leader of the reformation in Scotland versus the only church that survived the Reformation. This is a very interesting contrast that I saw. Behind me is the tomb of Archibald Douglas Menteith, who was a renowned Scottish um, colonel in the East India Company. Not the British Empire, the East India Company, which was basically a large corporate who had... It was one of the largest corporations ever seen to have such an army at its fingertips, and he was one of the biggest colonels here. What I want to point out here, though, is how much this um, tomb resembles the church in Jerusalem of the Knights Templars. And it's interesting because there's no direct connection of 
Glasgow in particular to the Knights Templars. There's no, no churches that showcase that this was the temple of Knights Templars. But there was a lot of admiration and they even played a role in back in the day when they existed. The second monument or church that I find fascinating when it comes to how much it resembles um, the Knights Templar churches is this one. I don't know what it's called, but the fact that it's really circular the same way this one, this tomb is made, a lot of the Knights Templar churches were famous and uh, noticeable because of the fact that they were round. And this church is round from this side and from the other side as well, which shows how the Knights Templars did play a huge role in not only basically the Crusades, but also in major cities across the European world. Okay, so now I am standing in a place that I believe, in my opinion, is one of the most iconic places that you need to see for Glasgow. There's Finiston Crane, which is which is, serves as a symbol for the Clyde's important and strategic history and how important it was during the 1800s, 1900s. And it's still important, but it's for different reasons now. Before it was trade, shipbuilding. So this is just non-functional, it's just a symbol right now. BBC Scotland's there, the Armadillo's there, and the, the famous Glasgow iconic bridge is there as well. On the other side, is the tallest structure in all of Scotland. Next to it is the Glasgow Science Centre and right there is the Riverside Museum with a, with a tall ship next to it. The River Clyde played a major role in the development of Glasgow, in the formation of the cities and it still serves a very important role uh, for tourism in particular. There are so many other significant places that have a high historical importance in the city including but not limited to Glasgow University, Kelling Grove Art Gallery and Museum, the Celtic and Rangers football stadiums respectively, Pollock Country Park, and so, so much more. A few interesting facts about Glasgow include Thomas Lipton, the founder of the tea company Lipton, was from here and is buried in the southern necropolis. Celtic Club was founded by Irish Catholic immigrants that came to Glasgow during the 1800s. The Glasgow subway is the third oldest underground railway in the world. The first international football game was played in Glasgow in 1872. And the tallest cinema in the world is the Cine World Glasgow. referenced in the famous Scottish song that uh, dates back to the Jacobite revolution during the 18th century. This was when the English and the Scots were fighting uh, against each other and specifically during the battle of Culloden after the Scottish defeat many of what the Scots refer to as brave laddie heroes they were captured by the English and they were taken as prisoners of war to London. Many of their family, their wives, walked all the way from Scotland to London to witness the trials of treason that they were placed against. Unfortunately, all of them were found guilty and all of them were executed in the most horrific ways possible. After this, many of their body parts, including their heads specifically, that were put on spikes, they were placed on all of the cities and towns between London and Glasgow which was the, the way that they had traveled. So it, was, it served as a sign, as a warning to any other people trying to act any sorts of traitory. After the defeat, Scotland and the Scottish Highlands in particular were integrated with much more force into Britain. And this song basically is from the viewpoint of a Jacobite prisoner who was freed. And through his lens, when he was freed, he, he misses one of his friends and he writes this song in a very beautiful way. Loch Lomond serves to remind him, and not only him, but also the, his friend that died, of the beauty of his homeland and reminds him that it will always be here and one day there is a hope, there will be a revenge, there will be a new life.